Greetings and welcome to Word Magazine. This is Jeff Riddle. I'm the pastor of Christ Reformed Baptist Church in Louisa, Virginia. And in this episode of Word Magazine, I want to offer a brief review of a video and an accompanying article that was recently posted to the website for Crossway, the evangelical uh, publishing company. This was published on their website on October the 29th of 2024, and it was a video and an article in a series that they're hosting, and that series is titled, I've Heard It Said. The short video is less than two minutes in length, and it features Dr. John D. Mead, Old Testament professor at Phoenix Seminary in Phoenix, Arizona, and you might be familiar with him if you listen to the channel because he's also been a recent critic of the Reformation Bible Society and its first conference that was held in August of this year related to, he's been a critic of our views related to the defense of the traditional Masoretic Hebrew texts of the Old Testament and our resistance uh, to using the Septuagint and other ancient translations to correct, supposedly to correct or amend the traditional Hebrew text. Men's, uh, Mead's segment in this uh, I've Heard It Said series at Crossway is titled, I Have Heard It Said That the Old Testament is Full of Errors. This video and others in this series are meant to address various controversial topics on theology or apologetics from an evangelical Christian perspective. So what I want to do is listen to the video. Like I said, it's quite short. And then I want to offer my summary of what I think the content of the video is about. And then I want to offer five responses to it. But let's begin by uh, watching the video, and I'm not going to start and stop it. I'm just going to play it from beginning to end. And uh, here's the site at Crossway. You can see October 29, 2024. I've heard it said the Old Testament is full of errors. And of course, the video here is a link. Uh, the video is on YouTube, and you can find it there on YouTube. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, open this up and uh, let's just listen again without interruption uh, to Dr. Mead address the topic. Uh, I've heard it said the Old Testament is full of errors. I've heard that Old Testament manuscripts are full of errors. Now it's true that there are no original manuscripts of ancient books, and the Old Testament is included among that number. We are dependent fully on the copies of copies of copies that, go, that, that purportedly go back to the original, okay? That is how we have our Old Testament in the first place. But those copies have all the signs of human fragility, of human error within them. So, so the question is, what, it's not a question about whether there are errors or not. There are. But the question is, does that lead to despair? Does that lead to a pessimistic outlook that might conclude something like, therefore, we don't have the Bible? And I'm happy to say no. Because the, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, has a wealth of manuscripts, a ton of evidence, textual critics who can actually look at all those manuscripts, compare them, sift out what are simple copyist errors, and actually restore the original text based on comparing uh, all of the evidence. And therefore, I, I, I remain optimistic that we can get back to the original books of the Old Testament. All right, that is the video, and we listened to all of it. And now, again, I want to offer my own summary of the content, and then I want to offer five responses to it. So let's begin with the, the summary. Um, Meet's uh, segment, again, is titled... I've heard it said that the Old Testament is full of errors. 
This video is presumably meant to defend the authority, authenticity, and integrity of the text of the Old Testament against unnamed modern skeptics who argue that it cannot be trusted because it is full of errors. If you listen to Mead's presentation, however, you will find that he does not deny or refute the charge that the text of the Old Testament is, in fact, full of errors. In fact, he agrees with and affirms this perspective. Mead begins by noting rightly that there are no longer any extant autographs or original manuscripts of the Old Testament books. We do not, for example, have any of the books of the Pentateuch, handwritten by Moses. We do not have autographs, the, the handwritten manuscripts directly from the authors, but only opographs or copies of the Old Testament books. The English Puritan John Owen speculated that God did not allow the autographs to be preserved because he knew that men would be tempted to worship them. Mead then adds that these copies of the Old Testament are riddled with what he calls human fragility, and they are filled with transmissional errors. He says it is not a question as to whether or not there are errors, affirming plainly there are errors. Mead Mead then suggests, however, that this admitted situation of an overwhelmingly corrupted Old Testament text should not lead to pessimism or despair. Despite this confused textual situation, Mead says, one cannot conclude we don't have the Bible. He assures his listeners, in fact, that we have what he calls a wealth of manuscripts. Some modern scholars are fond of saying we have an embarrassment of riches. Our saving grace, or our saviors, we might say, Mead asserts, are textual critics who can compare manuscripts, sift out simple copyist errors, and, as Mead puts it, actually restore the original text by comparing all of the evidence. Mead concludes by saying he is optimistic that we can get back to the original books of the Old Testament. That's my summary. Now let me offer five observations or five responses to Mead's presentation. First, as already noted, Mead is not refuting the charge that the Old Testament is supposedly full of errors. He is in basic agreement with that assertion. The title of this video might well have been, I agree that the Old Testament is full of errors, but I am nonetheless optimistic that we can almost fix it. His approach here reminds me of the veritable cottage industry that developed among evangelical scholars a few years ago in order supposedly to refute the textual criticism of Bart Ehrman. The only problem was most of the men who lined up to refute Ehrman confessed that they basically agreed with Ehrman that the text of the New Testament was overwhelmingly corrupted, that traditional passages like the ending of Mark, Mark 16, 9 through 20, and the woman taken in adultery, John 7, 53 through 8, 11, are in fact spurious and secondary and not original. And that it is the task of scholars to attempt to reconstruct the text to some semblance of what the original might have been. These evangelical scholars did not so much disagree with Bart Ehrman as to whether the New Testament text was grossly corrupt and needed reconstruction, but they disagreed with him only as to whether under these circumstances, this text could still be said to be inspired and to hold authority for faith and practice. 
Meade is essentially suggesting a similar approach with regard to the text of the Old Testament, though he does not explicitly cite a Bart Ehrman type Old Testament scholar as a foe. Second, Mead is promoting in this video a modern restorationist view of textual criticism. This view suggests that the text of the Bible is rather hopelessly corrupted, but that modern academic scholars can examine the extant empirical evidence and use human reasoning to at least reconstruct a close approximation to the original text. Such scholars are typically clear to point out that they cannot guarantee that the text they reconstruct is, in fact, the authorial text. It will be subject to change based on new discoveries and methods developed by scholars. Third, this modern reconstruction model is a departure from the classic Protestant approach to the text of Scripture. That view held that the Bible had been immediately inspired by God and it has been kept pure in all ages. See Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 1, paragraph 8, and Second London Baptist Confession of Faith, chapter 1, paragraph 8. This view holds that though the autographs have not been preserved, they remain accessible through faithful copies or opographs. There were some scribal discrepancies in transmission, but these were minor and could be easily corrected using those faithful copies and the consensus of the rule of faith. With respect to the Old Testament, the Protestant fathers affirmed that these ancient oracles of God had been preserved by the Jews in the traditional Masoretic text of the Hebrew Old Testament. See Romans chapter 3, verse 2 a common proof text that was appealed to by the Protestant fathers. This text had then providentially come into print at the dawn of the Protestant era, first published by Daniel Bomberg in 1524 and 1525. These printed editions of the Hebrew Masoretic text of the Old Testament were used as the touchstone and standard for all the classic Protestant translations of the Bible, as well as for Protestant preaching, teaching, and scholarship. The Dutch divine Petrus von Maastricht declared, neither the Hebrew of the Old Testament nor the Greek of the New Testament has been corrupted. And he stated that in his Theoretical Practical Theology, Volume 1. The English divine John Owen suggested that to attempt to amend or alter the traditional text would be, quote, to make equal the wisdom, care, skill, and diligence of men with the wisdom, care, and providence of God himself, end quote. That's from his Collected Works, volume 16. Fourth of these five observations responses. The Reconstruction Method is advocating departure from the traditional Masoretic text affirmed by both Jews and Protestants for centuries in favor of a modern critical text reconstructed using reasoned eclecticism. Fifth, as indicated by Mead's answer and as touched on above, those who hold to this modern view do not believe that we currently have the text of the Old Testament rightly reconstructed in hand. They are only optimistic, to use Mead's term, that perhaps a very close approximation of the text might be achieved sometime in the future as a result of the application of modern textual criticism. Sadly, we seem to be observing the same undermining of the stability and authority of the Old Testament text under the application of modern textual criticism 
as has already largely taken place among many evangelicals and mainline Protestants with respect to the New Testament text. No doubt, many evangelical scholars making use of this reconstruction method would be willing to say of the Old Testament text what Daniel B. Wallace has already said of the New Testament text. If I might paraphrase a famous statement from Dan Wallace about the New Testament text and make it apply to the Old Testament text, we might take Wallace's words when he said, we do not now have in our critical Hebrew texts or any translations exactly what the authors of the Old Testament wrote. Even if we did, we would not know it. Let us finally return to the topic. I've heard it said the Old Testament is full of errors. It's impossible that we might still respond to this topic in the way that von Maastricht and Owen and the Westminster Divines and the particular Baptist Fathers did in their day. If so, our response might sound something like this. The Hebrew Old Testament is not full of errors. It was immediately inspired by God and has been kept pure in all ages in faithful copies. As it did for the ancient Jews and for men of the Reformation, the traditional Hebrew Masoretic text continues to provide for Bible-believing Protestant Christians a clear and authoritative canonical standard for both the sacred books and the sacred text of the Old Testament. Well, we'll bring uh, this episode to an end. I hope this has been helpful and edifying for those who are listening. Uh, I was reading my notes here, and I will post the notes uh, to my blog at jeffriddle.net if you want to read uh, what I basically have just read aloud to you here now. Again, I hope this episode has been helpful for those who are listening. I'll look forward to speaking to you in the next episode of Word Magazine. Till then, take care and may the Lord richly bless you.